Okay, we're uh, we're a go. So uh, good afternoon, everybody all over the world. Um, I'm going to sing a song um, collected in Hampshire, or at least published as being in Hampshire. The source is two singers from Hampshire, one from Medstead in Alton, and another one, Philip uh, Stephen Fillmore from Andover, and it's Lowlands of Holland. So we're very international tonight. As I walked out one May morning down by a riverside, Twas there I spied a fair pretty maid, Oh, then to be my bride, Oh, then to be my bride, my boys, The chambers to behold. May the heavens above protect my love, A jolly sailor bold. I'll build my love a gallant ship, a ship of noble fame, with a hundred and seventy sailor lads to box her about the main, with a hundred and seventy sailor lads without any fear or doubt. With my true love in that gallant ship, I was sadly tossed about. The anchor and the cable went overboard straightway. The mainmast and the rigging lie drear buried in the sea. Twas tempest and bad weather and the raging of the seas. I never, never had but one true love, and he was drowned at sea. Said the father to his daughter, what makes you so lament? There is a lad in our town that can give your heart's content. There is neither lad in our town, neither Lord nor June, said she. Since the raging seas and stormy winds parted my love and me. <coughs> No handkerchief shall bind my hand, no comb go through my hair, no candle light or fire bright shall view my beauty fair, and neither shall I marry be until the day I die, since the low, low lands of Holland parted my love and I. Lowland lands of Holland. Oh, nice. Off to a great start, Tim. Thanks for that. Um, over now to Riggy. And could we have Charles West after Riggy, please? Okay. I, I hope you were all getting your beer. I miss it sorely. We do not have English beer here. When the summer sun is shining, England's finest hour is seen. When the ripening barley is waving yellow in its frame of green. When the birds are welcome's evening, when the sky is turning pale. Fill your glass and toast their glory with a taste of English ale. English ale, oh English ale, how we love our English ale. Fill your glass and toast their glory with a taste of English ale. When the autumn leaves are golden and the new scents are on, and when the autumn leaves are golden and the evening air is chill, when the swallows leave us for a place where it is summer still, then sorry, messing it up. Then the birds on welcome's evening, when the sky is turning pale, fill your glass and toast their glory with a taste of English ale. 
in the shell, oh, in the shell, how oh, we love our English shell. Fill your glass and toast their glory with a taste of English shell. When the winter brings the snowstorms and the evening air is chill, <coughs> When Jack Frost hangs at your window and the nights so quickly burn, there's a log fire warmly burning in the fans and in the dale. Fill your glass and toast their glory with a taste of English ale. English ale. Then toast their glory with a taste of English When the spring begins to quicken and new scents are on the air, when the sleepers rouse and waken and the land again is fair. Childhood, old men tell such wondrous tales. Fill their glass and toast their glory with a taste of English ale. English ale, English ale, how we love our English ale. Fill your glass and toast their glory with a taste of of English. Apologies to Harvey Andrews. Yeah. We enjoyed it anyway. We certainly did enjoy it anyway, Riggy. Thank you. Um, so Charles West is our next singer, and then I'll do one after Charles. Thanks, Amanda. Well, I'm going to do a song about a Canadian mining disaster, which I'm sure that you'll all recognize. Uh, this is the Spring Hill Mine Disaster. <laughs> Spring Hill, Nova Scotia, down in the dark of the Cumberland mine. There's blood on the coal and miners lie in roads that never saw sun nor sky. In roads that never saw sun nor sky. In the town of Spring Hill, you don't sleep easy. Then the earth will tremble and roll When the earth gets restless, miners die Bone and blood is the price of coal Bone and blood is the price of coal In the town of Spring Hill, Nova Scotia Late in the year of 58 the day still comes and the sun still shines, but it's dark as the grave in the Cumberland mine. Dark as the grave in the Cumberland mine. Down at the coal face, the miners working, rattle of the belt and the cutter's blade. The walls close round and the goes round the living and the dead men. Pass when the lamps gave out. Ayla brushed and got up and said, We've no more water or light or bread, so 
shouts of the black-faced miners listen through the rubble for the rescue team 600 feet of coal and slag hope imprisoned in a three-foot seam hope imprisoned in a three-foot seam eight days pass and some are rescued leaving the dead to They dug their grave Two miles of earth is a mark in stone Two miles of earth for a mark in stone Spring Hill Lovely sound Thank you, Charles. Lovely stuff as always. Um, I'm going to sing next and Rick, um, Rick Polly, if you could follow me, that would be great. So, um, you know what they say about mining disasters, uh, you wait for ages for one and then two come at once. Um, so <laughs> this one, <laughs> this song is uh, uh, the Donny Bristle Moss Moran pit disaster. And it uh, happened on the 26th of August uh, 1901. So this year it's the 120th anniversary. The, um, there were men in the mine trying to drill a shaft um, up th from the mine through to the, um, uh, to the surface above. And it was, uh, they, they did a miscalculation and um, they, were, they were digging up into the, the liquid bog which uh, flooded the mine and uh, yeah and there were people trapped below and rescuers sent <clears throat> on the 26th of august our fatal moss gave way although we did our level best its course we couldn't stay ten precious lives were there at stake Who'll save them was the cry. Who'll bring them to the surface or along with them will die. There was Rattray and MacDonald, Hind and Patterson. Too well they knew the danger and the risk they had to run. They never stopped to count the cost. We'll save them was the cry. We'll bring them to the surface or along with them we'll die. They stepped upon the cage, they were ready for the fray. They all meant business as they bailed themselves away. Soon they reached the bottom, far from light of day, and went to search the workings, and Tom Rattray led the way. There was Rattray and MacDonald, Hind and Patterson, too well they knew the dangers and the risk they had to run. They never stopped to count the cost, we'll save them was the cry, we'll bring them to the surface or along with them we'll die. They lost their lives, God help them, yes it was a fact. Someone put in a stopping and they never did get back. Was it not another blunder? My God, it was a sin. To put a stopping where they did, it closed our heroes in. <clears throat> there was Rattray and MacDonald, Hind and Patterson. Too well they knew the dangers and the risk they had to run. Ten precious lives were there at stake. We'll save them, was the cry. We'll bring them to the surface, or along with them we'll die. Thank you. 
So, Kathy, I hope I get the uh, Kathy Dent Calendrical Consistency Award this week. Um, and uh, over now to Rick Polly, followed please by Stacy Ross. And I'm going to take us back across the pond to Mississippi, but we won't stay there for long because, as you'll hear, the singers only too glad to say goodbye to Mississippi and uh, well he should for his experience there was as a convict laborer. So long ago, so long ago, so long Mississippi goodbye my friends, so long ago, so long ago, so long Mississippi goodbye. I've been a convict here since 1901 Chopping cotton and the white man's son was down in the Delta in 1902 when they did anything that they wanted to do so long ago, so long ago. So long, Mississippi, goodbye, my friends. So long ago, so long ago. So long, Mississippi, goodbye. I was a convict here in 1903. You'd have seen the things that they done to me and the convicts here. In 1904, we slept in rooms that had no floor. So long ago, so long ago. So long, Mississippi, goodbye, my friends. So long ago, so long ago. So long, Mississippi, goodbye. To escape from here in 1905, some fled north trying to stay alive, and the convicts here in 1906 were laying track with shovels, hammers, and picks so long ago, so long ago. So long, Mississippi, goodbye, my friends. So long ago, so long ago, so long, Mississippi, goodbye. Oh, I realized in 1907 that I wouldn't get free till 1911 and a convict here in 1908. The railroad track he had to make straight so long ago, so long ago. So long, Mississippi, goodbye, my friend. So long ago, so long ago, so long, Mississippi, goodbye. And the convicts here in 1909 were working hard in the turpentine pine. And the convicts here in 1910, they was working the women like they working the men so long ago, so long ago. So long, Mississippi, goodbye, my love. So long ago, so long ago, so long, Mississippi, goodbye. So long, Mississippi, goodbye. Good stuff, Rick. Thank you very much indeed. Um, we're going back and forth across the Atlantic like any, nobody's business. OK, um, Stacy now, followed by Bob Boston, please. All right. Good afternoon and good evening, everyone. Uh, very interesting song, Rick. Uh, really enjoyed that. Uh, tonight, I'd like to sing a song that I learned from the singing of Louis Killen, uh, later Louisa Jo Killen, who learned it from another fine singer by the name of Brian Blanchard. And I had the pleasure to know Brian Blanchard. And uh, he was a fine singer, too. And I I know he, he was in a car accident and it kind of upended his life and then he started to get his life back together and that was the last I heard from him. So if anybody else has heard from Brian in the last two decades, I'd, I'd love to hear from you in the chat, um, his whereabouts and how he ended up. Anyway, here's the song. Of all the trades going, it's in begging I take great delight. For me rent is all paid as I lay. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm just going to take a sip. I'm getting a frog. Oh, sorry about that. 
Of all the trades going, it's in begging I take great delight. For my rent is all paid as I lay my bags down for the night. And my rent is all paid as I take a long stick in my hand. And at night I will please the fair maidens as best as I can. Well, I walked all the day till I came to some rich farmhouse. And I knocked on the door like some poor fool left lately without. Without eating or drinking for forty long hours or more. And I said, kind madam, will you pray for and remember the poor? If it's arms that you want, you shall get them, old man, she said. But before she gave pennies, she ran to her mother upstairs, crying, Mammy, oh, Mammy, there is a strange man in the hall. Stand close by your chambers, for I fear he may ravish us all. Well, her mother did scuff her and called her a silly young fool to take any such notion against a poor man in the hall. For his clothes, they were all ragged and his breeches torn behind and before. And his doldrums hung down a good fourteen long inches or more. Tom Paget, she said, why don't you go work for your bread? For some rich farmer and be decently clothed and fed. Ah, but to plough and sow, madam, I am afraid that I have little skill. But I'll plough that small furrow that lies at the foot of your hill. Tom Paget, she said, if you and I could but agree, then I'd make you the steward over all of my men for to be. And we'd eat at one table, and we'd sleep in a soft bed of down. If only I could have you, Tom Paget of Killaloe Town. Oh, of all the trades going, it's in begging I take great delight. For me rent is all paid as I lay me bags down for the night. And me rent is all paid as I take a long stick in me hand. And at night I will please the fair maidens as best as I can. Tom Paget. <laughs> Thanks very much, Stacey. Nicely done. Okay, um, it's time now for Bob Bosson. And after Bob, Hazel Richings, please. Okay. Uh, I'm going to read a poem this time. Uh, I think it's a, just a wonderful piece that was written last week by a woman named Julia Pope, a Canadian from a small community, Naramata, BC, uh, who's been living in the States and couldn't come back to see her family for, you know, a year and a half uh, because of the COVID restrictions, um, but came back this summer. And, and I just have to give you this people this one piece of background 
global warming climate change has hit BC like a sledgehammer this summer. Uh, 500 people died of, uh, from the heat in Vancouver one weekend. Uh, there's forest fires uh, massively across uh, the country. Um, the government has asked tourists to go home uh, so that they can keep uh, the, the uh, hotel rooms available for refugees from the fires. And uh, uh, the smoke has been uh, very, very bad in some parts of the country. Here, not so much where I am on the island, although there's a fire we can see from the beach just below our place. <clears throat> anyway, this was uh, Julia's response to all that. And uh, I think it's a terrific poem. Hang on. Naramata, August 14th, 2021. We are trying, oh, have I got, sorry. No, I'm good, sorry. Yeah, Bob, just before you start again, I just want to say I might switch your video off because you seem to be suffering from a bit of a slow connection. So if it's if your words are coming a bit slowly, I'll switch your video off. Don't be alarmed if you see yourself disappear. It sounds good. All right. We are trying to have a nice time as we sit inside, eyes looking up every half hour. Look, you can see the trees now. I think it's getting better. The smoke hangs like gallows above the valley. We still can't see the mountains. The trees weren't visible an hour ago. Now they are, but the ash is still falling like snow. Even so, we are eternally hopeful every half hour. What about now? How about now? Maybe next week the wind or the rain will come. The children want to play outside. The adults want the dream capitalism promised them, but the contracts are all broken. Work hard, wake up early, obey, they said. Your time in the sun will come. But the sun is barely visible now through the dark orange smoke. The system took their youth and their spirits. Then it even took our summer and now their childhood. Rio is four. The chest x-rays show no asthma, but his cough tells a different story. The sickness resides in the world we built for him. Dad, can we go to the park today, please? I promise I won't breathe. There's nowhere to run but into the reckoning, into the depth of the love, into the roaring no more rising in his father's throat. My heart lives outside my body now my best friend of 40 years tells me. What a miracle that kind of love is. What a miracle our bodies are, the way they teach us that the boundaries we were taught between self and other, between us and nature, can be incinerated by the devastating truth that without clean air, without water, without plants, without each other, we don't have what we thought we did. We aren't who or what we thought we were. What about now? How about now? My prayers are with all the mothers and fathers whose very hearts and bodies are telling them, not on my watch, not in my child's or any child's world, do we let what is sacred be run off a cliff for the sake of stories told by constipated gentlemen in the Financial Times and whispered into the politicians' ears, no. The unbroken line of courage and love binds us to our ancestors, to the very first mothers that we all share. A thing that, ain't, a thing that ancient and holy does not get snuffed out by the whimper of the status quo, pleading with us to believe what were always lies. Lies told by people who had forgotten how to live, how to be good elders, how to be good ancestors. So may these sparks in the darkness burning through the forests and through our hearts guide us home to who and what we really are and to what it means to be alive together in this time. 
Now? Now. Look, there's the mountain across the lake where my ancestors' ashes lie. I can still see it. We're still alive in this place now, and we are not out of time yet. I'll um, put my email along with the uh, title of the poem in case anybody uh, wants to read it, I can send it. Powerful stuff, Bob. Thank you. Hazel, it's over to you now. And after uh, Hazel, let's hear from Martin Neal. Thank you. I was just composing a message to you, Amanda, but you better ignore it, I think. <laughs> um, I was away at the weekend singing live with people. It was lovely. I've tested negative again this morning, as have most for, for, who were in in my company. It was great fun. Um, on my way home, I was in, I was near the A34 and there's the National Memorial Arboretum where the military and the uniformed services are remembered. And Linda Kelly had written a song, which I hope I can recall at the moment. Arobus. In this place, I've watched the hoarfrost growing buds of spring and suck the life from solid earth and all that ever grew within. Uncommon creatures gather and await the coming year and the early dawn she rises and shadows disappear and winter, winter, winter she fades and calls upon the breathless sun to warm her dying days. Soft, anxious nature treads with faltering steps along this ancient land, and snow she melts, and fists of green punch through the soil on which we stand. And somewhere near a child cries, a father that she never saw, a hero's heart, a loving sigh, her hand upon his name once more. And winter, winter, winter she fades, and calls upon the breathless sun to warm her dying days. Soft the stone, its golden hue like sands upon a distant shore, her precious roll with honour born, a comrade's wreath she simply wore. Her golden light shines down on us. Sorry, I've lost the line. And um... nope, lost it. Lost it. I'm thinking of the place as I'm singing it, and it's um, a most moving location full of memorials to the police, the ambulance, um, the shot at dawn, Royal Ulster Constabulary, any military unit, special forces, the football Christmas truce. And I highly recommend if anyone's near the A34, they take themselves near north of Litchfield to Alrobus. Um, apologies for not finishing. Cheers. Well, what we heard was great, Hazel, and we'll look forward to some other time hearing the rest of it. Um, OK, Martin, it's over to you now and then Pete and Maggie. And uh, now for something completely different. Uh, <clears throat> a change of uh, mood, if you like. Well, 
once I courted a pretty girl, I courted her quite well. Her name it was Kitty Mariga Maria, and mine was Bobby Wells. Now one day when I was courting Kit and her father was at home, he said, if I catch you here again, I'll tickle your bottom. With a whop she had it, I tell you I had it, a whop she had it, I aye. Whop she had it, I tell you I had it. What she added, I aye. Well, Kit and I, we did agree a ladder for to bring. We placed it under the window, and by gum, it was just the thing. We talked and chatted and chatted and laughed till all at once, by gum, me foot slipped from the ladder, and I fell and cut my bottom with a Whop she had it, I tell you I had it, a whop she had it, I aye. Whop she had it, I tell you I had it, whop she had it, I aye. Well, they wheeled me home in a wheelbarrow, they wheeled me home with care, and when we got to the farmyard gate, why didn't the old folks stare? Me brother Jim come running out and he says, What have you done? I been a court in kit, says I, and I fell and cut my bottom with a whop she had it. I tell you I had it, a whop she had it, I ay. Whop she had it, I tell you I had it, whop she had it, I ay. Well, they took me to the doctors, and there I showed me case. Then didn't they do a grin when I showed them me Sunday face? They thought I was making a fool of them, but a fool of them by gum. I thought they was making a fool of me when they turpentined me bum. With a whop she had it, I tell you I had it, a whop she had it, I aye. Whop she had it, I tell you I had it, whop she had it, I aye. Well, Kit and I, we did agree for to get wed. She made me a sling to put me bum in, and through it I cocked me leg. As we was walking down the street, the kids all shouted by gum. There goes the man with his bum in the sling that fell and cut his bottom. With a whop she had it, I tell you I had it, a whop she had it, I aye. Whop she had it, I tell you I had it, whop she had it, I aye. What she had it on. Hey. Oh, ah. marvelous. Oh, marvelous. That was wonderful. Can always rely on you for a bit of class, Martin. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Pete, Pete and Maggie next, followed by Wendy Lanchon. Thank you, Martin. We're back to a bit of misery, so thank you so much. <laughs> we needed that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, let's start again. There's always them as does and them as lets them. For so it is and evermore shall be. It's true I was a little bit upset when Mary sat down with the company. She always was the clever one. They say she should have been the son. Will there be a paradise for such as me? They say Martha's got no riches, she's no beauty, for so it is and evermore shall be. But I give my gifts of hand and heart and duty, and honour to my God and family. She always was the clever one, they say she should have been the son. Will there be a paradise for such as me? 
I never wanted to be mean, didn't mean to make a scene, for so it is and evermore shall be. With all those guests and bread and wine, and we were running out of time, bid her get up and come and serve with me. Bid her get up and come and serve with me. She always was the clever one, they say she should have been the son. Will there be a paradise for such as me? Lazarus looked embarrassed by my boldness, for so it is and evermore shall be. The guest of honor calmed it down and told us that Mary was just where she ought to be. She always was the clever one, they say she should have been the son. Will there be a paradise for such as me? I'll understand when fires need no tending, for so it is and evermore shall be. I'll get it when our clothes need no more mending, when the blind see and the dead will walk with me. She always was the clever one, they say she should have been a son. Will there be a paradise for such as me? Will there be a paradise for such as me? Really good, really good. Beautiful. Uh, lovely stuff yet again, Pete and Maggie. Thank you. Okay, over now to Wendy, followed by Paddy Hannon, please. Um, okay, uh, very sadly, Nancy Griffith died recently, so this is kind of uh, a tribute to her, even it's not, it, though it's not something she wrote, uh, it's something she sang beautifully. If these old walls, if these old walls could speak of things that they remember well, parties and people raising hell, a couple in love living week to week, rooms full of laughter, if these old walls could speak, if these old halls, if hallowed halls could talk, they would have a tale to tell. Sun going down and dinner bell, children playing at hide and seek, from floor to rafter, if these old halls could speak. I would tell you that I'm sorry for being cold and blind and weak. They would tell you that it's only I have a stubborn streak if these old walls could speak. If these old fashioned window panes were eyes, I guess they would have seen it all. Each little tear and sigh and footfall and every dream that they came to seek or follow after if these old walls could speak. They would tell you that I owe you more than I could ever pay. Here's someone who really loves you. Don't ever go away. His 
what these walls would say. If these old walls could speak. Thank you. So oh, oh, oh. grand, grand, grand. Good to hear you as always, Wendy. Okay, it's Paddy, and then um, if Tara and Elise could follow Paddy in whichever order you wish. Okay, um, a few minutes ago, Stacy sang a song about the trade of begging. Here's another one. Oh, the trades in England of begging is the best. For when the beggar's tired, he can sit him down and rest. And a begging I will go, and a begging I will go. Have a poke for me oatmeal and another for me salt. Have a pair of little crutches, I should see how I can halt. And a begging I will go, and a begging I will go. There's patches on me fusty coat, have a black patch on me. But when it comes to Tupney Ale, I can see as well as thee. And a begging I will go, and a begging I will go. Me breeches they are now, but also the art is free from care. As long as I have a belly full, me ass it can go bear. And a begging I will go, and a begging I will go. Well, I've been deaf in ducking field, and I've been blind at shore. And many's a right and willing lass are bedded in the straw. And a begging I will go, and a begging I will go. There's a bed for me where'er I lie, and I don't pay no rent. I've got no noisy looms to mind, and I am right content. And a begging I will go, and a begging I will go. I can rest when I am tired, and I heed no master's bell. A man would be daft to be a king when beggars live so well. And a begging I will go, and a begging I will go. Of all the trades in England, a begging is the best. For when a beggar's tired, he can sit him down and rest. And a begging I will go, and a begging I will go. Rollicking song, thank you, Paddy. Okay, so now um, it's going to be either Tara, then Elise, or Elise, then Tara, um, followed by Kathy Dent. But just before our next singer starts, um, I just wanted to remind those who have not already put up their virtual hands to sing, please do so. Um, if you've already done it, you don't have to do it again. I have your name on a list, but if you uh, if you haven't yet indicated to sing this evening, please do so. Um, we have a few more spaces, I think, left um, on the singers list, but uh, it's filling up quickly. So get in there while you can. OK. Tara or Elise, who's it going to be first? Hiya, I'm going to stick Elise on first and she's going to sing you a mazurka. So it's a friend, a French friend of mine visiting and she, she's got a lovely little voice and uh, no. she's been singing these lovely uh, Farsi songs. I was hoping to persuade her to sing one of those, but as I didn't give her any warning, she's going to sing you a mazurka, a French mazurka instead. Here she comes. <laughs> <laughs> hi. <laughs> yeah, they're all saying hi. So sweet. L'as-tu vu le petit gamin, la canne à la main, comme il s'en va vite L'as-tu vu le petit gamin, la canne à la main, comme il s'en va loin L'as-tu vu le petit gamin, la canne à la main, comme il s'en va vite L'as-tu vu le petit gamin, la canne à la main, comme il s'en va loin L'as-tu vu comme il s'en va vite la tu vu comme il s'en va loin La canne à la main, le petit gamin Est déjà bien loin sur le chemin 
Chapeau rond sur sa bonne mine, bouche en pince tirée sur le coin. Les pieds écartés, les talons serrés, penchant de l'un puis d'autre côté. Là tu vu le petit gamin, la canne à la main, comme il s'en va vite. Là tu vu le petit gamin, la canne à la main, comme il s'en va loin. Là tu vu le petit gamin, la canne à la main, comme il s'en va vite. Là tu vu le petit gamin, la canne à la main, comme il s'en va loin. Yeux tout ronds, maquillés d'une mine, cheveux fous, laine de mouton, les genoux rapiécés, la figure de crêpe, penchant de l'un puis de l'autre côté. Redingote bouffée par les mythes, pantalon pli d'accordéon, les chaussures trouées, les chaussettes usées, sifflotant sa vie panier percé. Là tu vu le petit gamin, la canne à la main, comme il s'en va vite. Là tu vu le petit gamin, la canne à la main, comme il s'en va loin. Carré noir de moustache caline, sourcils haut d'un air étonné. La canne à la main, le petit gamin est déjà bien loin sur le chemin. Là tu vu comme il s'en va vite. Là tu vu comme il s'en va loin La canne à la main, le petit gamin Est déjà bien loin sur le chemin Là tu vu le petit gamin La canne à la main, comme il s'en va vite Là tu vu le petit gamin La canne à la main, comme il s'en va loin Là tu vu le petit gamin, la canne à la main, comme il s'en va vite. Là tu vu le petit gamin, la canne à la main, comme il s'en va loin. Did you know? Can't hear you, Tara. Sorry. <laughs> Did, did you notice for those that speak French that there was more breeches ripped in there? It wasn't exactly ripped breeches, but it was uh, definitely his shirt wasn't in a good state or his shoes. <laughs> anyway. Well, thanks very much to Elise. Or, you know, to <laughs> that was great, wasn't it? And a great bit of a rhythm there going. If Steve Andisor had been there, I'm sure he would have been dancing. But I don't think he's online tonight. Um, well, I, I saw that you were all kind of trying to sing along to uh, songs earlier, so I thought I'd do a sing along song. And I'm going to do a very quick, uh, if I had a hammer, I know it's an old song. I know some of you are saying, if I had a hammer, I'd smash you over the head with it. But I'm going to sing it anyway, because I love it. So there you go. If I had a hammer, I'd hammer in the morning. I'd hammer in the evening, all over this land. I'd hammer out danger, I'd hammer out warning. I'd hammer out love between my brothers and my sisters all over this land. If I had a bell, I'd ring it in the morning. I'd ring it in the evening all over this land. I'd ring out danger. I'd ring out warning. I'd ring out love between my brothers and my sisters all over this land. If I had a song to sing, I'd sing it in the morning. I already do. I'd sing it in the evening, all over this land. I'd sing about danger. I'd sing out warning. I'd sing out love between my brothers and my sisters, all over this land. Well, I've got a hammer and I've got a bell and I've got a song to sing all over this land. It's the hammer of justice, it's the bell of freedom, it's the song about love between my brothers and my sisters all over this land. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great stuff, Tara. Everybody's singing along. Great. Um, okay, Kathy Dent, followed by Jacob Muller Jensen, please. I sang this one not so long ago, but with things unfolding the way they are in Afghanistan, I'm going to sing it again. Uh, particularly pertinent, the third verse, when 
there are going to be lots of people who won't get out and get safe. I will post the um, chorus because it's a bit long. Good in rank in the early morning heat to the piper's measured beat go the slowly stepping feet their best friend will they heard the blast they watched him bleed never saw who did the deed in the hills of Kandahar, in the hills of Kandahar, danger was a phantom face, it's hiding in each stony place, behind each wall and bearded face, pink and white, the poppies blow, beauty waving row on row, belies the dangers soldiers know, in the hills of Kandahar. Silent soldiers kept the watch, round the Shura in the heat heard the village elders speak saw the young men's shuffling feet still in sight of village walls half an hour till chopper calls came the blast that still appalls in the hills of Kandahar, in the hills of Kandahar. Danger was a phantom face, it's hiding in each stony place, behind each wall and bearded face, pink and white, the poppies blow, beauty waving row on row, belies the dangers soldiers know, in the hills of Kandahar. Don't damn in haste, he used to say, there's a price they have to pay, they have to live there day by day. You may go, but they must stay. One tour he'd done, he loved it all. He loved his mates, he loved them all. He even loved them, you were in call in the hills of Kandahar. In the hills of Kandahar, danger was a phantom face. It's hiding in each stony place, behind each wall and bearded face. Pink and white, the poppies blow. Beauty waving row on row belies the dangers soldiers know in the hills of Kandahar. Class the soldiers lined in rank in the early morning heat to the piper's steady beat. Go the slowly stepping feet to his home. Now they must send trusted comrade and best friend. His second tour 
is at an end. In the hills of Kandahar, in the hills of Kandahar, danger wears a phantom face, it's hiding in each stony place, behind each wall and bearded face, pink and white, the poppies blow, beauty waving row on row, here lies the dangers soldiers know, in the hills of Kandahar, hills of Kandahar. <laughs> Very appropriate for this uh, point in time, Luke, Cathy, thank you. Okay, over now to Jacob and then Eleanor and Sam, please. Thank you. So, sometimes when I go out to have fun, I decide to go to a castle in Poland. And this castle of Poland is special because it's actually also sometimes a college of wizardry. And as all good wizard castles, of course, it has a couple of houses. And the house I first got sorted into when I was down there had this as their, um, well, their song. And you might figure out what animals the different houses are using. <coughs> oh, come tell me, mighty dragon, what your feast has been tonight. But I met a noisy rooster in the early morning light. He kept crowing about valor, but he was a sorry sight. But devouring him has added to my wisdom and my might. Oh, my wisdom and my might. Oh, my wisdom and my might. But devouring him has added to my wisdom and my might. And come tell me, mighty dragon, have you found a worthy foe? Well, I met a daring lion who annoyed me even so. While its teeth and claws were sharpened and we fought through right the night. In the end I claimed the victory for wisdom and for might. Oh, for wisdom and for might. Oh, for wisdom and for might. In the end I claimed the victory for wisdom and for might. Welcome, tell me, mighty dragon, what you dined upon today. Well, I met a silver phoenix, and the bird got in the way. Now for sure it was courageous, quite impressive, taking flight. But its burning flame was wallowed up by wisdom and by might. Oh, by wisdom and by might, oh, by wisdom and by might. But its burning flames was wallowed up by wisdom and by might. Then come tell me, mighty dragon, who lies here beneath your feet? Well, it was a muddy golem too disgusting for to eat. It was quite a boring battle, hardly worth calling a fight. But I guess it only goes to show my wisdom and my might. Oh, my wisdom and my might. Oh, my wisdom and my might. But I guess it only goes to show my wisdom and my might. <laughs> Thank you. Lots of fun, Jacob. Um, okay, Eleanor and Sam, um, oh, followed by Judy Cook, please. Uh, right, well, I'll sing first. Um, right, do this one. Um, the co owner and the pitman's wife. A dialogue I'll tell you as true as me life Between a coal owner and a poor pitman's wife As she was a travelling all on the highway She met a coal owner and this she did say Derry down, 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 down Derry down Good morning, Lord Firedown.
she said, I'll do you no harm, sir, so don't be afraid. If you'd been where I'd been the most of me life, you wouldn't turn pale at our poor Pitman's wife. Derry down, 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 Derry down. Then where do you come from? The owner he cries. I come from hell, the poor woman replies. If you come from hell, then come tell me right plain how you contrive to get out again. Derry down, 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 Derry down. The way I got out, the truth I will tell. They're turning the poor folk all out of hell. This is to make room for the rich wicked race. For there is a great number of them in that place. Derry down, 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 Derry down. And the coal owners is the next on command to arrive in hell, as I understand. For I heard the old devil say as I came out that the coal owners all had received their route. Derry down, 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 Derry down. Then how does the old devil behave in that place? Oh, sir, he is cruel to the rich, wicked race. He's far more crueler than you can suppose. Even like a mad bull with a ring through his nose. Derry down, 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 Derry down. So if you be a coal owner, sir, take my advice. Agree with your men and give them a full price. For if and you do not, I know very well. You'll be in great danger of going to hell. Derry down, 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 Derry down, Derry down, 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 Derry down. Cole owner in the pit. Over to you now, Sam. <coughs> Uh, right, well, our folk club in Worcester has reopened, so here is a song, which is very nice, of course. Um, so here is a song that mentions Worcester. <coughs> the crockery ware for the young people is something you used to put under the bed many years ago. In Worcester town there lived a spark. He courted a girl both gay and smart. He asked of her one favour right. If he could sleep with her that night. To me right for the diddle for the died o day. Right for the diddle for the died o day. Now this young girl she did contrive. How for to fix a joke that night. So on the landing she placed a chair, and on it she puts her crockery ware. To me right, fall the diddle, fall the dido day. Right, fall the diddle, fall the dido day. Now this young man rose in the middle of the night, thinking to find his heart's delight. He banged his shins against the chair, and overturned the crockery ware. To me right, fall the diddle, fall the dido day. Right, fall the diddle, fall the dido day. Well, the old woman rose in a hell of a fright, and quickly she does call for a light. She says, young man, now come you here, capsizing of my crockery ware. To me right, fall the diddle, fall the dido day. Right, fall the diddle, fall the dido day. 
That young girl lay in the very next room, a laughing at the game going on. Says she, young man, I do declare, you must pay my granny for a crockery ware. To me, right fall the diddle, fall the died, o day. A right fall the diddle, fall the died, o day. The police was sent for without delay, and money down I had to pay. I paid three bob, I do declare, for smashing the old bugger's crockery ware. To me right, fall the diddle, fall the dido day. Right, fall the diddle, fall the dido day. So come all you wild and rambling sparks, the likes to ramble in the dark. Don't bang your shins against the chair, or overturn the crockery ware. To me right, fall the diddle, fall the dido day. Right, fall the diddle, fall the dido day. The crockery ware, with a moral. We're doing well for choruses this evening, so thank you um, for that, uh, both of you. Okay, I can hear myself speaking back. It's Judy followed by John White, and hopefully my echo will go away soon. Okay, uh, I've got another chorus for you, and Dennis will join us on the chorus. This is uh, the Eensy Weensy Spider uh, with uh, words by Bob Blue and uh, tune by Stan Rogers. The eensy weensy spider climbed up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. And the eensy weensy spider climbed again. She would not let the elements distract her from her goal. The purpose of her mission was embedded in her soul. Now see the sunshine down on beasts, on women and on men, and see that eensy weensy spider rise again, rise again, rise again. Don't let misfortune keep you from doing what you can. So whether your legs number two, or four, six, eight, or ten, be like that eensy weensy spider, rise again. This eensy weensy metaphor's a lesson to us all. We cannot be defeated if we rise each time we fall. But if this story seems like one you learned too long ago, then think about some other ones you know. You've heard the myth of Sisyphus, and you know Jack and Jill. It's such a potent image going up and down a hill. So every time you fall or lose a lover or a friend, be like that eensy weensy spider. Rise again, rise again, rise again. Don't let misfortune keep you from doing what you can. So whether your legs number two, or four, six, eight, or ten, be like that eensy weensy spider, rise again. Perhaps you think this allegory goes a bit too far. Climbing up a pipe is not like reaching for a star. But whether it's a water spout or mountain that you climb, you've come this far, indulge us one more time. It could be said that each of us climbs up a water spout. The downward pull of gravity is not what it's about. The upward pull of hope is what will save us in the end. Be like that eensy weensy spider, rise again, rise again, rise again. 
Don't let misfortune keep you from doing what you can. So whether your legs number two or four, six, eight, or ten, be like that eensy weensy spider. Rise again. Yay. Little hope Yay. and encouragement. Okay. That's what we need. Great. There is hope. Thank you, Judy and Dennis. <laughs> okay, John White, it's over to you next. And then could we have Tamsin, please? Uh, this is a song from uh, the Northeast, the great Tyneside tradition. It's uh, Joe Wilson's Sally Wheatley. Now I'm most depressed and sad. When I was once so blithe and glad, I could trot around the tune so trim and neatly. But of all such joys I'm shorn, and I'm sad from night till morn, since I fell so deep in love with Sally Wheatley. And it's all oh dear me, what am I going to do? Sally's stolen, me heart away completely. And I'll never get it back, for she guns with Mr. Black. And they say he's going to marry Sally Wheatley. Now what to feel I didn't know the first time I Sally saw. In a threesome reel she skipped about so neatly. Now I should have took me chance and have asked her up to dance. But I was much too shy to speak to Sally Wheatley. And it told oh dear me, what am I going to do? Sally stolen me heart away completely. And I'll never get it back, for she guns with Mr. Black. And they say he's going to marry Sally Wheatley. Now he must have got it right when he took her home that night, for after work dressed up, he goes to see her nightly. There's much danger in delay, or I'd not be here today, with a heart about to break for Sally Wheatley. And it's all oh dear me, what am I going to do? Sally stolen. Me heart away completely, and I'll never get it back. For she guns with Mr. Black, and they say he's going to marry Sally Wheatley. And they say he's going to marry Sally Wheatley. Wonderful job. Wonderful. Ah, so sweet and poignant, John. Thank you. Your video's disappeared. I don't know why or if that was deliberate or what, but um, uh, anyway, uh, we could hear your audio coming through very nicely indeed. Okay, over now to Tamsin, and then could we have. Um, David Kidman and Pelagy, please. To f and uh, yeah, you two can finish the first half. So Tamsin. Um, hello, this is uh, Strike the Bell. Heft on the poop deck, walking about. There is the second mate, so sturdy and so stout. What he is thinking of, he only knows himself. We wish that he would hurry up and strike, strike the bell, strike the bell, second mate, let us go below. Look away to windward, you can see it's gonna blow. Look at the glass, you can see that it is fell. We wish that you... Sorry. We wish that you would hurry up and strike, strike the bell. Down on the main deck, working at the pumps, 
There is the larboard watch ready for their bunks. Over to windward, they see our great swell. They're wishing that the second mate would strike, strike the bell. Strike the bell, second mate, let us go below. Look away to windward, you can see it's gonna blow. Look at the glass, you can see that it is fell. We wish that you would hurry up and strike, strike the bell. Aft at the wheel, poor Anderson stands, grasping the spokes in his cold mittened hands. Looking at the compass, the course is clear as hell. We're wishing that the second mate would strike, strike the bell, strike the bell, second mate, let us go below. Look away to windward, you can see it's gonna blow. Look at the glass, you can see that it is fell. We wish that you would hurry up and strike, strike the bell. Forward in the foxhole head, keeping sharp lookouts. There is Johnny standing, ready for to shout. Lights are burning bright, sir, and everything is well. He's wishing that you'd hurry up and strike, strike the bell. Strike the bell, second mate, let us go below. Look away to windward, you can see it's gonna blow. Look at the glass, you can see that it is fell. We wish that you would hurry up and strike, strike the bell. After the quarter deck, the gallant captain stands, looking to windward with his glasses in his hand. What he is thinking of, we know very well. He's thinking more of shortening sail than striking the bell. Strike the bell, second mate, let us go below. Look away to windward, you can see it's gonna blow. Look at the glass, you can see that it is fell. We wish that you would hurry up and strike, strike the bell. We wish that you would hurry up and strike, strike the bell. Thank you. Very nicely done, Tamsin. Thank you. Yeah, we are doing very well for choruses this evening. I don't know when you stopped hearing me there. Um, yeah, uh, we're doing very well for choruses this evening. I don't know what David Kidman and Pelagy have for us, but uh, it's over to them, uh, one after the other, in whatever order they like, to close the first half. We shall then have a bit of a break and come back for the second half when we'll have a whole load of other singers. So over to you, David and Pelagy, or Pelagy and David. Yeah, hi, you can hear me. Excellent. Uh, I wasn't expecting to be finishing the first half, so I didn't. I had something planned for someone who's not here, so I can't sing that one. I'll have to sing this one instead. <laughs> That's what, yeah. <clears throat> this is a song which was written, well, it wasn't actually entirely written by Leon Russelson. He put the tune to Joy Macefield's words back in the 80s. Uh, that's all you need to know. I just hope I can remember it. <clears throat> I have been searching through the timeless past. Because of you, my love, because of you. Weaving a cobweb that would hold you fast. Because of you, my love, because of you. I'll sing again the song I heard you singing. The song that set the bells of heaven ringing, the song that surely told me the grave would never hold me, because of you, my love, because of you. 
And now I know that love's a fragile flower Because of you, my love, because of you So brief a time between the sun and shower Because of you, my love, because of you Oh, sing again the song I heard you singing, the song that set the bells of heaven ringing, the song that surely told me the grave would never hold me. Because of you, my love, because of you only by singing can i soothe my sorrow because of you my love because of you today is ending but there'll dawn tomorrow because of you my love because of you. Oh, we'll sing again the song I heard you singing, the song that set the bells of heaven ringing, the song that surely told me the grave would never hold me. Because of you, my love, because of you. For I have been searching through the timeless past. Because of you, my love, because of you. Weaving a cobweb that would hold you fast. Because of you, my love, because of you. Oh, sing again the song I heard you singing, the song that set the bells of heaven ringing, the song that surely told me the grave would never hold me because of you my love because of you and uh, that song is called, that song was called cobweb of dreams so it fits in a little bit with Incy Wincy Spider, who we heard from a few minutes ago, doesn't it? <laughs> Excellent. It's all planned. Beautifully planned. OK, over to you, Pelagy, to close the first half. Can't hear you, though. It'd be good if we could hear you. Oh, somehow I got muted by mistake. OK. Thank you for calling today. Our staff are here to inform or discuss. But first, let me assure you that your call is very important to us. With every hour that passes, our commitment to you grows stronger. And so we'll play the birdie song and ignore you for a little longer. Thank you for calling today. Your call is in a queue. I think you might well forget whatever else you had to do. We applaud your great persistence in this long and hard endeavour. Please dial one for a 20 minute message of no relevance to you whatsoever. Dial two to access our menu. Dial three to access nothing at all. Dial four to be mysteriously disconnected and have to make another call. Thank you for calling today to avail of our voicemail facility. We thank you for your patience and continuing stupidity. 
Your call is very important. We want you to know that we care. Press the star key to speak to a human being. Ah, fooled you there. Thank you for calling today. Just flex those finger sinews. Press the star key to speak to a human being. Ah, stupidity continues. Dial two for the chance to dial one. Dial one for the chance to dial two. Dial three for disconnection. And the subsequent deja vu. Press the keys marked pound and star and then your 19 digit pin. We'll know exactly who you are, but we still won't let you in. And while you drift on passing time and contemplate infinities, here's the theme from the deer hunter for a further 40 minutes. We installed the latest technology and business just blossomed and grew. Thank you for calling the Samaritans. Your call is in a queue. That's voicemail. Les Barker, of course. Well, even before that, I'm going to be begging off because it's now past 10 o'clock here and my sensitive neighbors are back from holiday and there's a light on in the room on the other side of the wall. Oh, what a shame for sensitive oh. neighbors. Um, okay, in that so, case, uh, uh, um, over then do another time. something next week, but I'll listen for the rest of tonight. Okay, um, uh, yeah, um, hope to hear you next week, Jim. Um, after that false start, David Diamond then. I hope, David, you're ready, followed by Helen Engelhart. Okay, well, as you know, I'm always ready, <laughs> sometimes, and... Uh... <laughs> This song was written to explain uh, how the uh, serious economic problems of the time have now been solved and all will be better soon. And uh, it's, it's self-explanatory and has a chorus to a tune you all know. So what could be better than that? Now recently I did intend my wicked lifestyle to amend but my good deeds turned out to be bad for the economy for every sin that we commit there's someone's job depends on it and on our morals loose and lax the government collects a tax the sleazy bars are closing down for i no longer come around no quickies in the afternoon. The no-tell motel's closing soon. What's going? For every sin that we commit, there's someone's job depends on it. And on our morals, oh, loose worry. and lax. Um. The government collects a tax. Tobacco farmers have gone broke since I no longer choose to smoke. The fast food chains are failing too. I've switched to carrots and tofu. For every sin that we commit, there's someone's job depends on it and on now morals loose and lax the government collects a tax policemen all are on half pay for i'll commit no crime today 
Gun salesmen, too, in grief are mute. There's no one I would like to shoot. When from my evil ways I cease, the unemployment rolls increase. The streets fill up with homeless folk. Since my bad habits I have broke. For every sin that we commit, There's someone's job depends on it. And on our morals, loose and lax, the government collects a tax. The Congress and the President, committees to my door have sent. With tears they beg in grief and pain, that I might unreform again. The market's down, and jobs are lost. For all our sakes, please count the cost. This wicked virtue, please give all. Go forth, young man, and sin once more. Off, oh, David. Was that one of your own? Tell us in the chat. Um, okay, Helen, over to you now. Followed by Trickett. Is that Ed Trickett? Is, uh, um, yeah. Anyway, um, Trickett is what it says on your screen. Trickett is who you are, as far as I know. So Helen, and then Trickett. Okay. So I'm going to repeat a song that I sang. Uh, oh gosh, maybe when I first started zooming with you. And uh, it's in the spirit of uh, the Incy Beansy Spider, as sung by Judy Cook earlier this evening. And uh, it's written by Melanie Damore. And she said that she wrote it one day after November 8th, 2016. There was an election held that day. You gotta put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. You gotta put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Don't give up hope, you're not alone. Don't give up hope, keep moving on. Put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Lift up your eyes and don't despair. Lift up your eyes love happens there you gotta put one foot in front of the other and lead with love put one foot in front of the other and lead with love i know you're scared well i'm scared too but here i am right next to you you gotta put one foot in front of the other and lead with love, put one foot in front of the other, and lead with love. Good advice for us all, Helen. And I think I remember you singing that very early on uh, in Sharps and Isolation. So thank you. OK, um, Trickett, uh, I, I, and uh, after you, it will be Simon Prager. So please go ahead and don't forget to unmute. Is that OK? 
Yeah, what, what's your full name, by the way? I, is it Trickett or have I? I'm Ed Trickett, that's the one. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Welcome. All these songs about Pope reminding me of something Steve Wright said, which was, if at first you don't succeed, don't try skydiving. <laughs> Sorry. Song from Martin Curtis in New Zealand. It's called The Cry of the Kaka, which is a derivative of the parrot family. When I moved to this country, you stood there beside me. We battled together through wind and through cold. We made a small home on the banks of the Tweed. What we had was richer than gold. But when the cry of the kaka drifts down from the quarries, roar of the streams as they rush to the sea. <laughs> Clouds pour in torrents from peaks to the valleys at these times. Do you think of me? But always a river was there as a barrier, controlling our life with its ebb and its flow, dictating completely our work and our pleasure, and if we should stay or could go. And when the cry of the kaka drifts down, from the quarries, roar of the streams as they rush to the sea. Clouds pour in torrents from peaks to the valleys. These times do you think of me? Then came the day you said you were leaving back to the east and the hills bare and brown. You said that you'd never be ruled by a river. You packed and you went off to town. And now they've said that you've married a banker. Have a fine house on the banks of the sea. Give plenty of money to sons and a daughter. It seems that you've forgotten me. But perhaps when the cry of the seagulls drift over, roar of the waves as they're kissing the shore, sea clouds drift in to blanket the harbor. Your thoughts are with me once more. And when the cry of the kaka drifts down from the quarries, roar of the streams as they rush to the sea. Clouds pour in torrents from peaks to the valley. These times, do you think of me? Yay! Wow. Yay! Seconded. Yay! Beautiful. Thank you. Beautiful. Lovely stuff, Ed, and uh, thank you for joining us, um, and th thank you for finding us at last. Um, okay, um, over now to Simon, and then we'll have either Deirdre followed by Chris, or Chris followed by Deirdre, or both together, I don't know. But anyway, Simon first. Uh, this is uh, one of my favourite Bessie Smith songs. Uh, she recorded it quite late in her career. Um, ostensibly it's a it's a dirty song but uh, if you listen to the way she sings it it's it's sung with yearning and uh, 
I don't think she had that in mind. She spent most of the later part of her career singing dirty songs in bars because she'd, uh, because that's what she had to do to make a living, and she resented it. She didn't, she didn't mind singing dirty songs. She resented having to. Tired of being lonely. Tired of being blue. Wish that I had some good gal to tell my troubles to. Seem like the world is wrong since my gal been gone. I need a little sugar in my bowl. I need a little hot dog on my roll. I can use a little loving Ooh, so bad I feel so funny, Lord I feel so sad Need a little steam heat On my floor Maybe I can fix things up So they'll go What's the matter, hard mama? Come on, satisfy your poor man's soul I need some sugar in my bowl Stop your fooling, drop some sugar in my bowl. stuff Simon as always as always okay um Deirdre then Chris or vice versa and uh, once we're done with those two could we hear from Trista Sellis please, please. So over, over, to, over you, to you Deirdre, Deirdre and, Chris. and Chris hi everyone um uh, I'll do a Saikon song if I had my life to live I'd surely live it over only walk in brand new shoes and just lay down in clover only work on christmas day and all the rest go sportin spend my days down by the stream and every night go courtin honey from the honeycomb water from the fountain sugar from the sugar cane and the wild rose of the mountain if I had a brand new quilt, I'd fill it up with feathers. Take my rosy by the hand and just lay down together. Oh, the days when I was young, thoughts that keep returning. Warm away the winter's chill, just like a log fire burning. 
Honey from the honeycomb, water from the fountain, sugar from the sugar cane, the wild rose of the mountain. Oh, when I think of home, sweet home, it makes my eyes go misty. Papa singing gospel songs, Mama sipping whiskey. Whiskey from the white oak barrel, sure do make good liquor. Makes the daytime twice as bright, makes the night go quicker. Honey from the honeycomb, water from the fountain, sugar from the sugar cane, the wild rose of the mountain. If I had a pickup truck, I'd fill it up with water, paint a catfish on the side, and make believe I caught her. Roll on gently down the road, just to keep from jumping. Head on down to the creek to see them catfish jumping. Honey from the honeycomb, sugar water from the fountain, sugar from the sugar cane, and the wild rose of the mountain. Lovely stuff, Deirdre, as always. Chris, you'll need to unmute again. I'm going to do uh, Botany Bay, which is a song I learned first from David Jones, and then I, uh, it, uh, I heard John Kirkpatrick do it, and it just blew me away. So. Oh, listen for a moment, lads, and hear me tell me tale how all the seas from England's shore I was condemned to sail. The jury says he's guilty, sir, and says the judge says he, for like Jim Jones, I'm sending you across the stormy sea and take this tip before you ship to join the iron gang don't be too gay in botany bay or else you'll surely hang or else you'll surely hang says he and after that jim jones it's High upon the gallows tree, the crows will pick your bones. You'll have no need of mischief there. Remember what I say, they'll flog the poaching hide of you out there at Botany Bay. The waves were high upon the sea, the wind it blew in gales, I'd have rather a drowned in misery than come to New South Wales. The waves were high upon the sea, and the pirates came along. But the soldiers on our convict ship, they were five hundred strong. They opened fire and somehow drove that pirate ship away. I'd have rather have joined those buccaneers than come to Botany Bay. For day and night the irons clang, and like poor galley slaves, we toil and toil, and when we die, must fill dishonored graves. But by and by I'll break my chain, and to the bush I'll go, and I'll join the bold bush rangers there, Jack Donahue and Co. And late at night, when everything is quiet in the town, I'll kill the tyrants one and all, I'll shoot the bastards down, I'll give the world a little shock. Remember what I say, they'll yet regret they sent 
Jim Jones in chains to Botany Bay. Botany Bay. Another fabulous song. The night is going very well indeed. Trista, it's over to you for the next uh, the next slot. And after Trista, let's have Gwyneth try. Uh, right. Okay. Um, this is a song which is um, takes its first verse and its chorus from a poem by Simon Armitage, and um, the rest of it is mine. Um, it's not as poetic as his bits. <laughs> Uh, okay, and um, I'm just going to sing this tonight because of Extinction Rebellion who are um, out doing their thing these two weeks in London and all over Britain. Okay, so this uh, the poem the poem by Simon Armitage is called Ark. If any of you want to look at it, um, and so is the song. They sent out a dark. Oh, bring back the leaf. It wobbled home on oil slicked wings, tinsel snagged in its beak. Bring back, bring back the leaf, bring back the leaf. Bring back the reed and the reef. Let the ice sheet spread on its frozen bed, and the snow cap cover the peak. Bring back the leaf. They sent out a boat. Oh, bring back the leaf from ravaged lands over rising seas, sacrificial refugees. Bring back, bring back the leaf, bring back the leaf, bring back the reed and the reef. Let the ice sheet spread on its frozen bed. And the snow cap cover the peak. Bring back the leaf. I'm going to move up a key. <laughs> mm. They built walls of gold. Oh, bring back the leaf that melted under the burning sun and oozed away at their feet. Bring back, bring back the leaf. Bring back the leaf, bring back the reed and the reef. Let the ice sheet spread on its frozen bed, and the snow cap cover the peak. Bring back the leaf. They sent out a call. Oh, bring back the leaf. What we have done, we must now undo. So leave your gods in peace. It's we who will bring back the leaf, bring back the leaf, bring back the reed and the reef. Let the ice sheet spread on its frozen bed and the snow cap cover the peak. Bring back the leaf. Thank you, Trista. Good to have you joining us again. Um, OK, over to Gwyneth. And then it should have been Racker Donnelly, but I think he's left us. So in that case, it will be Gwyneth followed by Wendy Grossman. Get the California Grill when I go over to Kalinka or something like that. Yeah, it would make sense. You're near to each other. Right. I think... That. Some people are not muted. Could uh, everyone who is not Gwyneth please mute? Uh, but, uh, yeah. Right, I'm going to sing the green bed. Or try anyway. Great story, a story, a story was one. Concerning of a sailor whose name it was John. He had been on a long voyage and had laid 
Kingsley, come on shore, for his money was good, but his rigging was tall. Oh, Johnny went to an alehouse where he'd been before, and he called for a glass of the very best beer. You're welcome in your song, Johnny. You're welcome in, said she. For last night, my daughter Molly was dreaming of thee. What news, my young Johnny, what news from the sea? Bad news, says young Johnny, for all's gone from me. A ship sprung a leak, mum, the voyage being crossed. And on the wide ocean, crew and cargo was lost. Call down your daughter Molly, and sit her on my knee. We'll drown all our sorrows, and merry we'll be. My daughter Molly's busy, John, and cannot come to you, and neither would I trust you for one part nor two. But Johnny being tired, he hung down his head. He called for a candle to light him to bed. Our beds are all engaged, John, and will be for a week. So now for fresh lodgings you must go and seek. Oh, what is your reckoning? The sailor he said. Oh, what is your reckoning? For you shall be paid. There's forty-four shillings, John, you owe me of old. Then out of his pocket he drew handfuls of gold. At the sight of this money the landlady did rue. Ah, have you remember all I've done for you? For what I've just said, John, was all said in jest of all my borders i like you the best the jingle of his money young molly flew downstairs she huddled him and cuddled him and called him a dear. The green bed is empty and has been all week where you and 
young Molly can take your sweet sleep before I would lie in your green bed I know I would rather lie out in the rain and the snow for if I'd no money out of doors I'd be turned and it's you and your green bed deserve to be burned. Come all you young sailors that sail on the main, but to get your living in God's storms of rain. Now when you have got it, pray, lay it up in store for the fear that your companions should turn you out of doors. Thank you. Gwyneth, that was an epic and a half. Amazing stuff. Okay. Um, over now to Wendy and Dave Harbord. Could you follow Wendy, please? Um, I fell in love with this on a Planksty album years ago. And I've never been able to figure out how to play small pipes <laughs> or alien pipes. So. My hat is frozen to my head. My body is like a lump. When my shoes are frozen to my feet, up and stand in your window. Let me come in, the soldier cry. Cold blue in the rainy night. Let me come in, the soldier cry. I'll never come back again alone. My father's working up the street. My mother, the bedroom keys to speak. The door and windows all do creak. Let you in, or let me come in the soldier cried. Oh, blow in the rainy night, let me come in the soldier cried. I'll never come back again, no. The shoe's gone down and let him in and kissed his ruby lips and the chin. And they've gone back to bed again in the soldier he won her favor. Then she's blessed the rainy night.
my hat is frozen to my head, my body is like a lump of lead, the shoes are frozen to my feet from standing at your window, let me come in, the soldier cried, I'm blue in the rainy night, let me come in, the soldier cried, I'll never come back again. Yeah. <laughs> More rising stuff, Wendy. Fantastic. It's been quite a cheerful, quite an evening for cheerful songs on, on the whole. That was another one. So let's see what Dave Harbert has for us. And after him, Sarah Pavey. Actually, in my head, he's always going on to the next house and pitching the same line. Uh, this is um, a chorus song. It comes from Geordie land. <clears throat> if I had another penny, I would buy another jail. I would make the piper play the bonny last of Biker Hill. Biker Hill and walk ashore, Collier lads forevermore. Biker Hill and walk ashore, Collier lads forevermore. The pitman and the girls are prim, they drink bumble made from gin. Then to dance they do begin to the tune of Elsie Marley. Bike a hill and walk a shore, Polly a lad forevermore. Bike a hill and walk a shore, Polly a lad forevermore. When first I came into the dirt, I had to work on the pitcher. Now I've got from two or three, a walk a pit done well by me. Cape a hill and walk for sure, Collier lasts forevermore. Bake a hill and walk for sure, Collier lasts forevermore. Geordie Charlton, he had a piggy, it with a shovel and he danced the jig. All the way to walk a shop to the tune of Elsie Marley. Bike a hill and walk a shore, Collier lads forevermore. Bike a hill and walk a shore, Collier lads forevermore. Thank you. Lovely. Oh, hey. Thanks, Dave. Another rousing one. Amazing stuff. Okay. Over to Sarah, then Declan Coyne, please. Okay, so I'm going to sing a tragic Italian love song, which um, some people in here will have heard already, so they'll be able to join in the chorus. Because even though it's a tragic Italian love song, it does have a chorus to it. And it comes from the musical, and it's called Maritana. Oh, oh, Michelangelo came across the sea from sunny Italy. He bring Maritana to, and Michelangelo will tell the tale to you. Oh. Oh, Maritana, at the fruit shop she sell the bigger banana. All the boys love Maritana, they give her the eye whenever they buy the bigger the ripe banana. Oh, oh Maritana, never sell the bigger banana anymore. For she leave her the nice the fruity shop to sell her the ice cream for the hokety pokety man next door. Oh, Maritana, at the fruit shop she sell the bigger banana. Oh, the boys love Maritana. They give her the eye whenever they buy the bigger the ripe banana. Oh. Oh, Maritana, never sell a bigger banana anymore. For she live for the nice fruity shop and sell her the ice cream for the hokety pokety man next door. Oh, oh, Michelangelo, feeling very sad, 
for I do very bad. While he wiped a tear away, say Michelangelo, banana cheat today. Oh, oh, Maritana, at the fruit shop she sell a pick a banana. Oh, the boys love Maritana. They give her the eye whenever she bites as big as a ripe banana. Oh, oh Maritana, never sell the big banana anymore. For she leave her the nice fruity shop and sell her the ice cream for the hokety pokety man next door. Oh, Maritana, at the fruit shop she sell a big banana. All the boys love Maritan. They give her the eye whenever they buy the pick of the ripe banana. Oh, oh, Maritan, nah, never sell the bigger banana anymore. For she leave her the nice of fruity shop and sell her the ice cream for the hokety pokety man next door. Oh. 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 Bravo! Yay! Oh, they don't write them like that, do That's from 1920, 1924. That is Florrie Ford. <laughs> Nothing like a bit of music call, Sarah. Thank you. Okay, um, now it's over to Declan, and then let's have Christine and Hazel. Yeah. Um, how do you follow that? Um, I grew up as a young fellow listening to stories about a, a very famous boxer who came from our neck of the woods, uh, a guy called Bartley Madden. Uh, he fought professionally in America. Uh, so this is a little song about him. The Ballad of Bartley Madden. Known as the man with the granite jaw, he could take a punch from the best of them. Wills and Tony, he pushed to their limit. He fought them all as a journeyman. Fred Fulton, Gibbons and Big Phil Brennan, Patlin, Levinsky, Greb and Winnard. Our own Jim Coffey, the first common giant, and he fought Tony in Crow Park. This man I sing of was Bartley Madden, of Caltra stock from whence he came. Born there in the year 1890, but to Zen Ross Common he first made his name. His father, T. His father, T.R., ran a nursery business at Ballymurray for many a year, planting orchards, hedgerows, and gardens. But to Gaelic football, Bartley loved most dear. He gained distinction with club and county, and then for Connacht he played with skill. But greener pastures and blue seas did beckon, so he joined the Navy, his wanderlust to kill. There he honed his pugilistic art, and at that pursuit he did excel. Bill Seek and his stagecraft, he soon was ready for the starting bell. While on Navy leave back in Roscommon, he trounced the police champ in Moat Park. He sparred with Joe and Johnny Dyer before the call came from New York. And from that city, his career it flourished. A cruiser and heavyweight, he fought them all. 300 bouts, 200 wins, but only one man caused him to fall. It was Gene Tunney, the future champion in Minneapolis, 1925. But Bartley sprawled out on the canvas for the first and only time in his life. But he fought some great men the full distance, and feared was he by one and all. 
Dempsey and Willard, when they were champions, refused to fight our battle lest they should fall. Now the final bell rang out for Barclay Madden, went on a visit to the Washington, D.C. Punch drunk and disorientated, he fell from a treasury building balcony. At 39 years, he left a young son to join his wife Tess Summers from Boat Park. By just three weeks, she had predeceased him. Now they're with the angels where there's no more dark. In that celestial ring where boxing greats embark. Got a bit mixed up there, but there you are. There you are. Nice one, Declan. Good to have you uh, with us again. And um, it is now over to Christine and Hazel. Christine, I think you have not sung with us before. Um, but, uh, great to have you here. I know you've been to the Real Sharps. <laughs> I'm usually doing something else on a Tuesday. I've just just done that. <laughs> so it's it's 30 years and two weeks since the loss of Keith Marsden and um, Christine enjoys singing Normandy Orchard and I like harmonising to it so that's what we're doing. Fab and just before you start I forgot to say that after you there will be another duo in the form of Chris and Ian. Excellent. They're building a camp on the cornfields at Darlingham. Bulldozers churning and changing the land. Long barbed wire fences and acres of tarmac. Missing huts range where the crops used to stand. Wide-eyed young village girls pointing and giggling at tanks and transporters that darken the sky. Convoys of lorries with fresh faces peering out. Some of the young men come learning to die. They say you can still hear the village hall band. Grey ghostly couples still glide round the floor. But Normandy orchards were waiting to welcome new partners for death in the mad dance of war. Mother has started a comforts committee whilst Reverend John's more concerned about sin. He is at the white swan, is rubbing his hands a lot. Watching the troops and the prophets roll in. Eager young squatties with overdone courtesy, dipping their caps at the girls passing by. Too soon from school to be licentious soldiery. Some of the ring to die. They say you can still hear the little band. Grey ghostly couples still glide round the floor. But Normandy orchards were waiting to welcome new partners for death in the mad dance of war. Mother would have a blue fit if she knew about Lieutenant Johnson, Johnson and walks in the wood. She's laid down the law and she's always gone on about men being beasts, so a girl must be good. But even she'd laugh at her clumsy propriety, me far too fearful and him far too shy. She might even pity his lonely bewilderment. One of the young men come learning to die. 
They say you can still hear the village hall band. Grey ghostly couples still glide round the floor. But Normandy orchards were waiting to welcome new partners for death in the mad dance of war. Peace came to Allingham many long years ago. Time passing by healed the scars on the land. Thanks on the village green, just a fond memory. Crops grow again where the hearts used to stand. And yet, as I walk by the woods, on a summer's night at the tree's edge, when the wind starts to sigh, I still hear their voices all rising in harmony. Lost, lonely young men come learning to die. They say you can still hear the village hall band. Grey ghostly couples still glide round the floor. But Normandy orchards were waiting to welcome new partners for death in the mad dance of Marston. Thank you. Thank you. What a treat. Um, great to hear you both together. Wonderful. And another two singers, I think, will be performing together in the form of Chris and Ian. So they'll be on next, followed by Charlotte Oliver. Um, and uh, those who I've have, I have already said are unlikely to get on, we'll see whether you do. There's still a possibility, so we'll see how it goes. But anyway, Chris and Ian followed by Charlotte. Thanks very much. Nice to be back and see you again. Uh, we're going to sing a song called Her Bright Smile. It's um, it's a folksal song. It's a four bitter. We'd be some of the folksal, and that was when the sailors were off duty and they used to sing songs of love and you know, about the home or the sweetheart or the, the, the country. Um, it was first published in, um, in Philadelphia in 1857, so it's quite an old song, and it's called Her Bright Smile. And you'll have to excuse me, once we've sung, I'm, I'm going to have to fly off. I've got a bit of a drive before... Uh, got to send him back home to his wife. So, fair old drive home. Um, mm -hmm. It's been a year since last we met We may never meet again I have struggled to forget But the struggle was in vain For her voice lives on the breeze the spirit comes at will in the midnight on the seas. Her bright smile haunts me still in the midnight on the seas. Her bright smile haunts me still. I have sailed the fallen skies And I've chartered as its path I have seen the storm arise Like a giant in his wrath Every danger I have known that the reckless life can fail Though her presence is now flown Her bright smile haunts me still Though her presence is now flown Her bright
bright smile haunts me still. At the first sweet dawn of light, as I gaze upon the deep, a form still greets my sight, while the stars their vigil keep. When I close my aching eyes, sweet dreams my memory fill. And from sleep, when I arise, her bright smile holds me still. And from sleep, when I arise, her bright smile haunts me still. For her voice lives on the breeze, her spirit comes at will. In the midnight on the sea, smile holds me still in the midnight on the seas the bright smile holds me still thank you Another treat, uh, two, two harmony songs, two real harmony songs in a row, fantastic. So um, I think I'm losing it. Did Charlotte Oliver, did I call you? Yes, okay. Um, and after Charlotte, Lisa Null, please. So Charlotte first. Okay, I, I wrote this one about a word I fell in love with and the word is gongoozling. And gong goozlers uh, were people who sat on the side of canals saying, oh, I wouldn't do it like that. And that's what this song's about. <clears throat> you can keep your all in holidays, Canary Spain at all. I'd rather go gong goozling along the old canal, watching high boats. On the Rochdale, try their first locks can be nice. They're getting more and more wound up. I sit and give advice. Gone goozling all along the waterway. Gone goozling, I spend my summer days. Gone goozling through tunnels and through towpaths. I'll be looking out for ghosts, though there were lurking everywhere. The shop shop he has the most, ones that scream through Market Drayton, ones that stand on Chester walls. With me I spy Book of Towpath ghosts, I'm sure to spot them all. Gone goozling all along the waterway, gone goozling. I'll spend my summer days gone goozling. Have you seen those hooray Henrys? On their day boats, they're the worst. Do they really need that many crates of pims to quench their thirst? They think they're on a motorway. They'll speed right past you, but just one boater retaliates and they'll end up in the cut. Bon goozling all along the waterway, gone goozling. I'll spend the summer days gone goozling. I need my teeth in for this one. On the Ponsisisti Aqueduct, I've seen the boats go by. Watch the Anderton boat lift as it raised barges to the sky. And at Hatton cheered on boaters, doing all 21 locks, whilst I sang Stairway to Heaven 
from the cafe at the top come goozling all along the waterway gone goozling i'll spend the summer days gone goozling and if i'm feeling lazy i'll just read canal boat names Though hundreds float past every day, there's rarely two the same. I like onion bargy, ruddy duck, and then there's grumpy git. But for me, cirrhosis of the river really takes the biscuit gone goozling all along the waterway, gone goozling. I'll spend my summer days gone goozling. I'm off gone goozling. Great stuff, Charlotte. Um, yeah, and we learn something new every day. Gone goozling. Um, okay, um, just uh, I have not reminded people very much this evening to put the names of your songs in the chat for all to see once you've sung. So if you haven't done that, please do. I think people oh, have been good pretty too. good, but um, please uh, put and put that in. And good. no one knows how to spell uh, that um, word, Charlotte. So you'll need to help us out. Okay, um, over now to Lisa Null. And yes, I think we will have time after Lisa for Ruri and Elizabeth. So yeah, um, Lisa, then Ruri, and then Elizabeth to, to close the evening. Um, over to you, Lisa. Okay, I can't get, yeah, there I am. Ah, well, I've been listening to people take the bold step of singing Scott songs and worrying about the fact that they can't sing in a dialect. My way of singing Scott songs is to delve into American versions of them in which uh, I don't really have to sing in the dialect. But of course they've changed a lot in the process. Are you, am I on? Yes, yes you're on. Yes. Okay. And uh, most of the American song, Scott songs are sort of shrunken, I don't like to think of that as negative, wonderful distillations of Scott's ballads. And this is one of them. All the clan wars and things that preceded it have sort of disappeared, leaving the emotional nuance. <clears throat> the Border Widow's Lament. I think this comes from Oklahoma, certainly from the Southwest. My love, he built me a bonnie bower, and he clad it with a lily flower. A better bower ye ne'er did see than that my knight, he came for me. There came a man by middle day. He saw my knight, and he went away. He brought the king that very night, who broke my bower and slew my knight. He broke my bower and took his gear he slew my knight so me so dear my servants for their lives did flee and they left me in extremity i sewed his sheet making my moan I watched his corpse, myself alone. I watched his corpse by night and by day. No living creature came that way. I took his body all on my back. The while I rode, the while I sat, 
I dug his grave both wide and deep, and I covered him with a sod so green. No living man I'll love again since my darling night he is slain. I'll grieve my heart forevermore until I see my love again. Wonderful. Wonderful. Wonderful stuff, Lisa, and injected a, a decent dose of misery that we've uh, we've been missing this evening, I think. So thank you. Yeah. Okay, over now to Ruri and then Elizabeth to close the evening. So um, what have you got for us, Ruri? And fingers going, crossed for your internet connection this time. I'm going cheerful this time. Uh, this is one from a, a fine traditional singer called Frank Hinchcliffe, who I used to know in my uh, days living in Sheffield. It's a funny song. It turned up uh, in the 1970s all over the country, but nobody knows who, who wrote it. And it sounds very traditional. Me and two other lads went on a spree, and on our way we met a pear tree. Up that pear tree I did climb, for to get some pears I felt inclined. To be Amy, oh, me, I'm a lack a daisy. Wife folly diddle to me, wife folly day. Up that pear tree I did clamber, the other two lads from me they squandered. Wasn't the pears that pleased at me, but a man and a woman come under that tree. To me, Amy, oh, me, I'm a lack a daisy. Wife folly diddle to me, wife folly day. With sweet kisses he embraced her, swore for many a mile he chased her. Pulled off his coat to save her gown, and he gently laid this fair maid down. To me, Amy, oh, me, I'm a lack a daisy. Wife folly diddle to me, wife folly day. I shook the pear tree just like thunder. The man and a woman ran away in a blunder. Wasn't the pears that pleased at me, but a damn good coat left under that tree. To me, Amy, oh, me, I'm a lack a daisy. Wife folly diddle to me, wife folly day. Into town I ran like fire, the owner of the coat being my desire. The owner of the coat I never found out, so I got a damn good coat for now. To me, Amy, oh, me, I'm a lack of daisy. Wife folly diddle to me, wife folly day. Come, all young fellas, wherever you may be, never go a-courting under a pear tree. Never pull your coat up to shave their gowns, for the pear say will come tumbling down. To me, Amy, oh, me, I'm a lack of daisy. Wife folly diddle to me, wife folly day. The pear tree. Right. <laughs> oh great stuff what an amazing evening we have had um it just uh yeah brilliant uh stuff i'm sure we're gonna have something great from elizabeth to close the evening as well before elizabeth comes on a big thank you to to david for compiling the index to sue west who is tonight's muter and um, to everybody for being here, phenomenal singing this evening and looking forward to seeing many of you next week for our last Sharps and Isolation session before we are back at Cecil Sharp House. Um, so yeah, um, uh, yeah, over to you, Elizabeth. Everybody in, Tur in the folk, uh, folk, folk scene in Toronto knows this song. I'm looking at the witch hazel blooming in the garden. Bright yellow flowers in the middle of winter time. And I tell my heart be strong like the witch hazel flower. And you will not be injured by this dark and troubled time. 
I take myself along to a place I know in winter and look at that south-facing bank covered with ice and I tell my heart it all will melt and run down to the ocean and you will not be injured by this dark and troubled time. We must say goodbye to the ones we love. We must say goodbye to many. And we must say goodbye in far too short a time. But I tell my heart, be thankful for the time we had together. And you will not be injured by this dark and troubled time. The times are full of menace, of danger rightly feared. Hatred turns to violence far away and near. If we stand up for our neighbor, protect and defend each other, then we shall not be injured by this dark and troubled time. I'm looking at the witch hazel blooming in the garden. Bright yellow flowers in the middle of winter time. And I tell my heart be strong like the witch hazel flower. And you will not be injured by this dark and troubled time.